Hello, I'm going to show you briefly how to use this Shiny app. We're going to focus on comp intervals for proportions. But you can revisit this Shiny app later when you have covered comp intervals for means. We'll begin with the Calculating a Comp Interval for Proportions tab or page. Notice we first can set the value for the true population proportion here with a default value of 0.5 or 50%. In our notation, this is the value of P, the population proportion or rate of successes in our population. We'll leave it at the 50% default level. And then you can input your sample size, the size of the sample that you'd like to generate. I'm going to use a sample of size 50. If we click on Get Sample, We'll get a summary of our first sample of 50 yeses and noes, or zeros and ones. We had a sample proportion of 0.44. 44% of our sample were ones or yeses, even though the true proportion in the population was 50%. And the standard error of our estimate, the standard error of p hat, is also computed here for us, turning out to be about 0.0702. Finally, let's make sure we have our desired confidence level, level set. We'll keep that 95% default level and click on Get Confidence Interval. Our 95% confidence interval has been created, showing the work behind getting that range of reasonable values for our population proportion. We have a nice visual picture of our interval and we can see that it's centered at our sample proportion p hat of 0.44. And since we do happen to know the value of the population proportion p, we can see that it indeed happens to be in this particular interval. This first interval captured that true proportion p of 0.5, so it's a good interval. What will happen if we take another random sample of the same size from the same population where the true rate was 50%. Let's click on Get Sample. And this time, our sample proportion is a little bit higher, the 0.56. And here's our standard error, our interval for the second sample of size 50 has a different range of reasonable values, still centered at the proportion p hat from our sample of 56%, and does happen to be a good interval that traps that true population rate. Before we move on to the next tab, let's see what happens if we change our confidence level. Let's move it up to 99% and click Get Confidence Interval. This interval now has a higher multiplier, having our range of reasonable values going out even further. So to be more confident with the same sample size, our interval is going to be wider. To help us better understand what the confidence level really means, Regarding how well the process works, let's go to the next tab, Understanding the Confidence Level for Proportions. We again will leave our true proportion value to be 50%. Let's make our sample size that nice large 50. And I'm going to start by generating 100 confidence intervals, each at level of 95%. Let's click Create Confidence Intervals. We'll have a visual picture of our 100 confidence intervals, each based on a random sample of size 50, each computed with that 95% confidence level. The blue colored intervals are those that did contain the true population rate of 50%. And those intervals for which the sample proportion was a little bit high or a little bit low a little unusually large or small, such that the interval around that best guess actually did not include the population rate. Those are shown here in red. We have a report of the results at the bottom, which states, we see that 96 of our 100 generated intervals, 96%, did contain the true population rate of 50%, and four did not. With a 95% confidence level, we would expect in the long run about 95% of our intervals to contain the true population proportion. 
You're asked in the pre-lab assignment to change the sample size, to change the confidence level, and observe what happens. Write up a few sentences about what you see. So have fun playing with this cool confidence interval shiny app.